objective three before we begin the practice. We're going to look at comparing scaled side lengths to scaled area. So if we have two rectangles, say this is two and four and eight, and this is x, then we can see four times two is eight, so then we must also take two times two to get that side length of four. What we're doing when we're finding side lengths is we're just multiplying by two once to get that missing side length. When we're doing scaled area, if we have two rectangles, say this is two, then this is four, then we're gonna say this is x and this is y. Now remember, area is length times width, okay? So we have to multiply, let's say the scale factor is three. We have to multiply by three to get six for the width. We have to multiply by three to get 12 for the length, okay? In order to do length times width to find the area. So we're multiplying by three, not once, but we're actually multiplying by three twice. The area of the small one is eight, two times four is eight. The area of this big one is gonna be 72. So the scaled areas isn't eight times three to get 72. You actually have to do eight times three times three, or eight times nine to get 72. Since we multiplied by three, not once, but twice, once for the length and once for the width, to get the new length and width to find the area, we have to multiply the area times nine to get the scaled area. Whereas here, we only multiplied by two once to figure out this side length. Two times two is four. That's all we did was multiply by two once. Okay, so the scale factor in this case would actually be nine. The scale factor up here is just two. All right, so when you're talking about area, you have to remember you're doing it twice. You're multiplying the scale factor for the length and for the width. So you have to include both of those in order to find the scaled area. Okay, and if you were working backwards, you would also have to divide it twice to figure out what this area was, um, because again, it's length and width.